Today I'm going to build a smoke tester to test for vacuum leaks. Um, done a little research and I think I have a plan. There are all sorts of different ways to do this. Materials I'm going to use, I have an old paint can that I just cleaned up. Uh, this one is plastic, which I think will actually uh, help because it'll make it easier to put uh, the electrical leads on it. So I have two of these guys that I just had laying around. Uh, you could use any kind of wire, alligator clip thing. And then I have screws, two screws here that will screw it on. If you have a metal paint can, you'll have to have these insulated when you put them in. Uh, but I think I'll just be able to do this without it. Uh, the nuts for that. Um, the uh, resistance wire that should heat up as I pass current over it. Um, I bought this on Amazon uh, for cheap, but uh, I believe you can also buy it at uh, like smoke and vapor shops, um, although I didn't go around hunting for it. Um, so that's 24 gauge uh, resistance wire, hopefully it's thick enough. Um, and then I have just a, a oil wick right here. The mineral oil, which is actually going to start smoking. Um, a little bit of uh, silicone caulking to seal things. I could probably also use epoxy um, or something like that, but I had this laying around. I think it'll seal it up just fine. And of course, two different size uh, drills. One to drill out for the screws for my electrical inputs, and the other one to drill out for uh, my air hosing. I'm going to go ahead and drill in uh, for my electrical contacts. One is going to be on one side, the other on the other side. I'm going to put them up a little bit because in the very bottom I want to put mineral oil. Um, so I want space for the mineral oil, and then I want uh, these contacts up above it. Let's see, I've got that at about two and a half inches. Seems right to me. that I have a hole on each side and I'm just going to put a screw on there like that uh, and that will pass the current from the outside through the screw onto the inside and I'll do the same thing on the other side So it's attached on both sides. The screws are coming through there. <clears throat> and I feel like that with that really tight, it's probably already air close enough to airtight. Again, it's not real high pressure. Um, all right. So another thing that you uh, you may need uh, some sort of round pipe or stick or something. Uh, that has the diameter about the same uh, as the width of your wick, so something like this, just to shape your resistance wire. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this right around the stick. Oh look, another tool I didn't mention. So this will be screwed onto each of the screws. Yeah, that looks about right. I'm going to use a couple more nuts to uh, make sure that that is secured to my electrical wires. So here's the wick. The mineral oil will not 
uh, come into contact with the resistance wire here. Uh, rather, the wick will wick it up from the bottom and up through that coiled resistance wire. And the contacts on both sides will pass a current through that. Right then, so it turns out that using a fish tank pump, my original idea, it's completely idiotic and does not work. So hopefully I'll be able to edit this video to uh, make it look like my original plan was to use an air compressor the whole time. So our next step is to add the intake to the air. Uh, I'm gonna use my air compressor just at a very low pressure. Uh, so I'm gonna put the hole for the air compressor right here uh, and just add that in. Some people try using smaller pumps, like uh, fish tank pumps and things like that, low pressure pumps, uh, but these don't really work. Uh, you would have to be a complete idiot to try something like this, and if you did, you would definitely deserve tons of hate and comments insulting your intelligence on YouTube. Alright, so, just gonna add this right here. I had a few fittings laying around that uh, I wasn't using, so hopefully we can just make those work. There we go. Perfect. I want a nice tight uh, fit right there so that it'll kind of just seal itself up. It should be low pressure so I don't have to do tons of stuff to make it airtight. Um, I feel like if it's a snug fit and uh, I've screwed some piece down in here, uh, it should work fine. Alright, so this is going to be the air intake. I'll hook my compressor up to that. Uh, and now I've got to get the air, air out uh, thing going on. Here's the completed smoke tester. Uh, these leads I can hook up to any 12 volt supply, uh, like the car battery. Uh, and this is the smoke output uh, right here on the top. Just have a little thing I can kind of clamp or tape, duct tape around this to seal it onto something. Uh, I can clamp this on to any vacuum line I want. Um, so, uh, that's about it. It's pretty straightforward except for one small detail that I found. Um, once I figured it out it seemed pretty obvious but uh, it took me a while to figure it out. Uh, the amount of resistance wire you use is important. If you use a lot of resistance wire uh, it doesn't heat up very much and doesn't produce a lot of smoke. Uh, if you don't use enough resistance wire it'll heat up too much and catch on fire. And I had to kind of play around with it until I got the right length of resistance wire, probably about that much, um, and then coiled it around. Um, and I can show you that here in a second. But uh, anyway, this is it. I hooked this up to uh, air compressor. And there we go. Uh, now, uh, so you can see it works really well. Um, to get it to this point, I had to uh, really get the resistance wire the right length so it would be hot enough. Um, that was the key. But uh, that's it. Um, you can see it produces a lot of smoke. Um, now, I was able to actually use my air compressor because it has a regulated pressure output to get low enough pressure. But you want you want to easily be able to stop it with your finger. Uh, you don't want high pressure because you don't want to damage your vacuum lines. Um, but that's it. Here we're looking at the uh, completed design. You'll notice the uh, wick is a little bit scorched from failed attempts. But you can see the get an idea of 
how much wire I used. Um, like I said, maybe it's like about two to three times the diameter of the can, and then it's coiled around the wick, uh, and you'll see the mineral oil there pooled in the bottom. If you use less wire, it gets hotter and produces more smoke. If you use more wire, it stays cooler and produces less smoke. Uh, so you want the shortest wire possible uh, without actually like burning the wick. Um, keep in mind that uh, if you do have a short wire, um, you can burn the wick, create a little bit of a fire. So, um, you know, do this at your own risk and maybe have a fire extinguisher handy as you're planning it.